against them too. Um, now hopefully you have some other security stuff put in place, which we'll talk about later if you're running these, but not everyone does. Um, my favorite though are the Action Tech routers. And a lot of people might not have heard of Action Tech because they're not really a big router name. Um, but these are the routers that Verizon Fios and Verizon DSL customers get. So these are everywhere. Um, let's see, the, the Action Tech 701, 704, and then uh, two versions of the MI424WR. Um, all of those I tested and it worked against all of them. Um, now what's really interesting about these, the, the one on the far right there and, and on the bottom, they're both the same router, just different hardware versions. Um, what's really interesting is the firmware running on these isn't manufactured by Action Tech. Action Tech actually uses a commercial third party firmware called OpenRG, which is made by a company called Jungo. And Jungo claims that this same firmware is deployed in over 23 million households worldwide. Uh, so awesome. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> um, so this attack definitely works, um, but we need to make it practical, okay? You can't just say, oh, uh, my JavaScript can see your router's internal interface. People go, yeah, okay, whatever. I don't care. Um, so we, we have to make it really a practical drive-by attack, really to demonstrate what can be done with this. Okay, so we have to get the target's public IP address automatically, because we don't want to have to know that before, beforehand. We want to be able to get that automatically. And it seems kind of simple at first, but we have to know this before they ever do a DNS lookup on us. So we basically have to know their IP before they come to us. And that, it actually is a simple fix for that. Um, the more difficult part is we have to coordinate all our services. So the DNS server, the web server, and the firewall all have to be coordinated. They all have to know what state each client is in they have to know when to block a client, when to allow a client, what IPs to return to each client. Um, so that requires custom code, and so that's a little bit more difficult. And finally, like I said, we have to make it do something useful. So to that end, I wrote the cleverly named tool Rebind. Um, <laughs> yay! Um, so it basically does everything for you, except register a domain name. Um, it's pretty much dot slash run, and you're done. Uh, it, it implements a DNS server, web server, it interfaces with the IP tables firewall. Um, it's got an HTTP proxy for the attacker to use. Um, it serves up JavaScript code, which basically acts as a client side proxy to proxy requests from the attacker to the router and back. Um, I tried to make the, the JavaScript as quiet as possible, so it supports uh, cross domain XML HTTP requests for exfiltrating data uh, if that's supported in the browser, um, IE8 and Firefox 3, 5, and later support those. Um, and I've tested it in all major browsers, uh, and it works. It's quite nice. So here's how Rebind works. I, I love the robot devil. He's the best. Um, so you've got an attacker here, and he's sitting behind um, the 1414 server, and he's running Rebind on that server. And he wants to target this client's router. Again, the client's router's public IP is 2358, and the attacker's domain is attacker.com. So the attacker gets the client to browse to attacker.com slash init, I-N-I-T. So again, before he does this, he has to have the name server set up, and Rebind has to basically handle all of your DNS queries, because Rebind's handling uh, the DNS portion of the attack. So the attacker, before he gets the client to browse, he has to go into his um, registrar, wherever he registered his domain name, and register a name server. Just name it ns1.attacker.com and put in the attacker's IP address. And then once that's registered as a name server, he has to go into his um, domain's configuration and say, hey, ns1.attacker.com is the primary name server for my domain. Um, but that's all the configuration you have to do. Um, so once, once the um, client browses out to attacker.com, of course, it has to do a DNS lookup. And Rebind's only going to send back one IP address. Because again, remember at this point, we don't know the client's public IP. We have no idea what it is. So he's just gonna say, yeah, I'm at 1414. So the browser browses out to 1414 and request slash init. Now we have the client's public IP because he's made a direct TCP connection to the web server running on Rebind. Uh, so Rebind says, ah, okay, I've got your public IP of 2358. He then sends back a randomly generated subdomain redirection. So he randomly generates uh, whackme.attacker.com um, slash exec, and he redirects the client to that. Now he logs this so the DNS server knows as well. 
And so now the browser says, okay, this is a 302 HTTP redirect, that's fine, but this is a new domain, so I have to do a new DNS lookup. So it says, okay, where is whackme.attacker.com? And so now the DNS server says, aha, the web server just redirected an IP address of 2358 to whackme.attacker.com. So if you're requesting whackme.attacker.com, you must be 2358. So at this point, it sends back the two IP addresses, 1414 and 2358. Um, so again, the, the browser's gonna try 1414 first, uh, request the slash exec page, um, gets the JavaScript, and now once Rebind does this, it's gonna tell IP tables, hey, reject any connection on port 80 from 2358 with a TCP reset packet. So when that JavaScript attempts to connect back to attacker.com, he gets a TCP reset from IP tables. Um, so now he switches over to 2358, and we've rebound attacker.com to the router's public IP successfully. Now once this happens, the JavaScript start going, is going to start sending a uh, requests, pull requests, back to attacker.com on port 81, because remember, he's blocked on port 80, so it gets sent to port 81. Um, and basically, this pull request is the JavaScript saying, what do you want me to do? Well, at this point, Rebind doesn't have anything for him to do, so he sends back nothing. But once these pull re requests start coming in, the attacker's web interface has that client's IP address in there. And yes, I know that's not the same IP address, but that's okay. Um, so all the attacker has to do is click on that IP address. And when he does, he has his browser configured to use the Rebind HTTP proxy. So his request actually goes off to the Rebind server. And Rebind says, okay, you want me to do a GET request on the index page of 2358, no problem. So he holds that connection open to the attacker's browser, and the next time this pull request comes in from the JavaScript, he says, yeah, I got something for you to do, do a GET request on the index page. So the JavaScript says, all right, no problem. Sends a GET request to whackme.attacker.com, which is the subdomain that we rebound, gets a response, sends a response back to Rebind, and then Rebind forwards that back to the attacker's browser. And so now the attacker is browsing around inside the router's web interface as if he's on the LAN. And he can click on links and submit forms and do whatever he wants. So this is much more fun when you do it as a demo than sitting down and explaining everything. So let's see if I can get a demo going here. I will smack you, Will. All right, so Rebind's running. Um, and yeah, that's it, you just run it. <laughs> there's, there's no configuration beyond that. Um, it, it does support a bunch of command line options um, if you want them. So my br this is my browser as the attacker and I've already configured it to use Rebind as my proxy. So if I type in Rebind, I should get the web interface for Rebind. And let me full screen this so it fits a little better. There we go. So now, I've got an attacker over here who's connected to the internal LAN of this router. So I'm gonna have him browse to attacker.com slash init, and he should pop up here. There we go. So now as an attacker, I just click, and I'm in. Um, so this is the login page for Verizon Fios routers. The default login is admin, password one, and no one ever changes it. Oh, that's not good. I knew my demo would fail. Yeah, apparently my client stopped calling back or something terrible happened. I swear this works. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so he stopped calling back, and I have no idea why. Let's try again. When in doubt, try again, right? All right, so he's back. Yay! Okay, so we logged in. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and just enable remote administration. Oh yes, I do want to proceed, thank you. 
So I'll go down here to remote administration. Yes, I want to receive guy. This user interface is so annoying. Um, okay, so I'm going to enable remote telnet. <laughs> Yay, okay, we're done. We've enabled remote telnet on this guy. Now, you will notice here that the images don't get displayed. That's because Rebind blocks image requests because I don't give a crap about images and they eat up a lot of bandwidth. Um, so now, we should be able to, if my terminal comes up here, uh, telnet 2358, uh, login same as before, admin password one. And you get this weird wireless broadband router thing. Just type in shell and you get a root shell. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so a lot of people say, well, I get into your router, I'll change your DNS settings. Yeah, that, I hate that. That's stupid. I don't want to do that. I want to own your router. Um, so, yeah, I've got a root shell now. Um, I can do, you know, ARP. Be like, oh, there's an internal client. Now I know his IP. Um, the downside to these, these things, of course, they're, they're running Linux, um, but it, it's really stripped down. You don't have Netcat, you don't have WGET, you don't have all these fun things. Um, but you do have TFTP. So I've uh, cross-compiled a scanning tool to run on the IXP425 processor that's inside this router. So I should be able to TFTP it down here and just start attacking the internal LAN. Okay, so there I got it. Let me trim it real quick. Okay, so again, this is kind of a, a real quick thing I threw together, a poor man's netcat that runs on the ARM processor because I had trouble cross-compiling netcat for some reason. Um, but let's just go ahead and scan that internal IP address we got from the ARP. Uh, 192, 168, 1.3. Yeah, if I type in the right IP, it would probably help, wouldn't it? Um, and let's scan ports 21, 22, 23, 80, and 443. Oh, that was quick. Port 80 is open. So we can now do a quick get request to port 80 on this internal server. And yeah, we get the secret web server page. Fun. So once I'm into your router, I can now go ahead and put whatever tools I want on this thing and run them against your internal network. I mean, I'm on your internal network at this point, which is the great thing about routers. Um, <laughs> they're connected to the internet and your LAN, fun. Um, so really, I can turn this into an attack platform to go after your entire internal network at this point. Um, and of course, routers don't have any kind of um, antivirus or anything on there, so I'm pretty much do whatever the hell I want. Um, but we're not, we're not limited to attacking the main web interface of the router. So again, you notice, okay, I had to log in, and yeah, most people are going to leave the default login, so that's a big problem. But I can also go after SOAP services. What about UPnP? UPnP lets me open up ports on your router to any internal client without any authentication at all. I can interface with UPnP using JavaScript. It's awesome. Um, there's also HNAP, which I'm not going to go into, but HNAP is uh, the home network administration protocol, which some routers implement. It does require um, authentication, but I've found some issues with certain implementations that allow me to get around that. Um, we can also rebind to any public IP. We're not restricted to the router's public IP. So the rebind tool allows you to say, hey, I don't want to re rebind to this guy's router. I don't really care about his router. I just want to use him as an on-demand botnet to attack this other server over here. So here's a list of IP addresses I want you to rebind clients to, and then the attacker just has a script that goes through and attacks those servers through someone else's web browser. Um, so how do we stop this? <laughs> Force fields would be awesome. Um, unfortunately, I don't have those working yet. Um, the, luckily, it's, it's fairly easy to stop um, and to identify. So, you know, first of all, if you can punch in the public IP of your router as an 